Hello, everyone, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about the electrical testing industry and the future it holds. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to dive deep in some of the industry's biggest topics. Today's guest is Felix Lesmes, a specialist in testing renewable energy sources, and he works in some of the trickiest parts of the globe. So let's find out what's up with Felix Lesmes. Felix. Welcome to the Mega Podcast. Thank you. Perfect. So we usually start our podcast with something we call the power up questions. So it's three quick fire questions just to get your brain thinking. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, good. (laughs) Um, What is the favorite place you've ever visited? The Amazon Rainforest. Perfect. And what was the last conference you presented at? Uh, It was the IT Summit summit event. After four years of not being able to do face-to-face, I was invited to present a project there. Must have been nice to get out for a minute. It was the, It was good. Great. Right. And last question, this or that, PV or wind? PV. PV. I knew that was going to be your answer for you. Um, so today we are actually talking all about renewable energy and some of the experiences you've had. So can you just tell me a little bit about why testing in the renewables industry is so important? Uh, is out in the field, there are so many challenges, unknown, unknown challenges that um, um, engineers are, are facing. There are no uh, proper guidelines, um, and most of the equipment um, is designed for standard, ideal conditions. While in there is, is something completely different. Um, and a lot of renewable energy, there is a lot of technical challenges that come with that. But there are a lot of environmental and kind of cultural factors that come with that as well. So you enjoy jet setting around the world. So can you tell me a bit more Mm -hmm. about maybe some of the kind of cultural differences that you've come across? I think the first, first thing that you will find, um, especially visiting these remote places that you would think to to target as remote, is that um, the average age of, of people working on, on plants, solar plants or wind plants um, is maybe mid twenties, 25, maybe the company owner. And that's specifically 35. in Latin America. I, so far it has been yeah. the experience identifying that a, a person in charge of deciding what needs to be done in a plant uh, is maybe 25, 26. And they know very well what they are doing. They're very curious challenging decisions, what they do, how they do things, open and willing to try things differently. And what have you seen in, in Europe? What cultural differences do they have there compared? It's more traditional. Um, I believe the environmental conditions uh, set a, a perfect environment for them because it's, it's, um, um, it tends to be a standard. Uh, so out of the norm, you will challenge the unexpected in, in in tropical regions or Latin American regions. And what about in Asia? Um, there are certain barriers. Uh, maybe you don't find that openness to, to challenge what you expose, uh, but we are working on it. We, we need to, to, to make sure they, they, they have that freedom. So they feel comfortable to ask you questions and things like that. Mm-hmm. Or to challenge what you, 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 you explain or share. So the renewable energy sector is obviously ever evolving. And I can imagine that that might throw up some misconceptions when it comes to testing. How do you feel about that? I think there are many, many. I think um, traditionally, uh, the concept of uh, instruments and equipment has been designed for um, other type of uh, industries, Uh, especially testers that we manufacture have been for traditional means of producing energy could be the, the traditional hydro or even nuclear. Um, and we tend not to feed those testers in new uh, technologies like PV, hydro or wind. Um, and we challenge mindsets that we need to face, uh, misconceptions of what needs to be tested on site. And, and it's a big challenge that especially engineers uh, on the field are, are facing because they find testers with names, PV, solar, green, um, that they don't do the, the job properly. It's when they face the, uh, I think it's, it's a miseducation out there in the market and the first company to tell them what to do, it becomes the norm. So you would say that there is an air of unknowing when it comes to testing because it's just so new. I think there is a bubble. There is a bubble. Uh, 
yes, out there, especially for the, for new um, engineers coming to the field of testing in, in wind and solar. And you recently went to a university, didn't you, to kind of dispel some rumors about testing in PV. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Uh, that was part of a campaign in um, Central America. So we visited universities, um, um, a, a group of students um, about to finish their degrees, degrees in engineering. It was electrical engineering and uh, re renewable energy. Um, first of all, it was the openness and welcoming to the brand, being there, um, understanding what testers technologies are out there um, available for them. Um, as part of this project, we visited a, a university a hospital open for the public that was key in that region to, to treat um, COVID patients. So the only condition for them to be able to access latest technologies, um, it was to be positive. Um, and they, they have the pleasure of having latest X-ray testers and extremely powerful. Um, and they wanted um, us to help and understanding what to test because they, they, the people in charge of running these units are um, graduates from the same from the same university, so they they they, they want to understand more of new technologies and tests, especially from this brand, Mega. So when it comes to Mega specifically, do you think people have any misconceptions? I think there are many, especially because we are a, a traditional company built on over hundred years of experience. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to believe, especially in the market and even internally, that most of our testers are not meant to be used in new environments or new technologies like mobility, wind, PV, well, PV and wind or um, battery storage, for example. Mm -hmm. And they applied very well, like motor testers being used in PV and solar, mm -hmm. PV and wind. <laughs> <laughs> it's always easy to get those ones mixed yes. up. I do it all the time. <laughs> so do you think that the human touch of it really helps people understand that these are actually truly sometimes multifunctional and multi-application testers? I think I think that face-to-face -face, uh, plays a big role in understanding and breaking that mindset, mm -hmm. um, especially when you, you allow them to play and feel an instrument and, and being used in the field. And you it, really it, can't get any better than actually holding it and kind of walking them through it, I guess. Yes, it's feeling how robust it is, for example, and not run into a PDF, telling yeah. them what is good for, but no, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. So do you have any specific experiences of going and doing that and really kind of showing them what our testers can do and how they can use them? Yes, I think a lot, <laughs> <laughs> especially um, in PV, trying to measure um, insulation resistance. Um, I'd say a year ago, it was an, an, an it's, it's still, it's still, um, a subject of discussion because we think that isn't, we don't have testers for that. So we have breaking that that rule. And going to site, um, especially in Latin America, where they are very curious, uh, they, they they break the rules always. They break the rules. So you tell them what you can do with the testers, and and in a blink of eye, they have done three times the the, the, the same thing. Um, or when, when you ask them, please don't do this, they will do it because they want to try how Yeah, they want to test it and is, is push the, the boundaries. The tester, yes. So Felix, a lot of what you do is all about going out and visiting customers and people that use our equipment. So I think that it's really important to highlight that the human factor really is important when it comes to people testing in this industry. So I recently heard that you've done some work in the Amazon in a really challenging environment, actually, and you've really dove headfirst into giving them that human touch. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Thank you for asking. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's part of a personal project I run. So it's, it's, uh, I develop water disinfection systems that I introduce in off-grid communities. Um, and as part of this story, Mega got involved and we engaged with a local energy company in one of the rural areas of great communities. Um, and it's when you show that that human side of Mega, uh, taking the time to, to, to visit them and show them what we can do for them. Um, so we donated instruments to a, a team of um, um, engineers of um, indigenous background that have been trained to, to support the uh, solar plants that are being built 
um, but is that is that face to face showing that we care? We care. So we are humans for humans. So when it comes to testing in the renewable industry, which is new and sometimes quite volatile, um, what is the one key takeaway you'd want our listeners to to take away? Wow, that we have the testers for that. We have a wide range of testers. Um, and be, 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 be picky when you find a tester that is branded as PV, green, wind, because you have to understand what is good for or not. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for chatting us today, Felix. I hope you've had a good time. Thank you. Yes, I enjoyed this. Thank you. Great. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.